Now in a bizarre turn in the rape case involving a Kerala nun and a priest today, 60-year-old priest Father Kuria Koz of the Jalandhar Diocese was found dead in his room in Hoshiarpur in Punjab. The circumstances of his death are not known, uh, but Father Kuria Koz is one of the 100 witnesses in the rape case against Jalandhar Bishop Franco Malakal. Uh, Father Kuria Koz's family has claimed that he was being threatened and being attacked repeatedly by people close to the bishop. The death comes days after Bishop Franco was given a hero's welcome come in Jalandhar by his diocese after he was granted bail. Well, we have Sister Jessime who's joining us via Skype from Kerala tonight. Sister Jessime herself uh, had has really fought against uh, uh, the system in the church and, uh, and, and spoken about the kind of abuse that nuns have faced within, within the church. Uh, we have a lawyer Ashwarya Bhatti also joining us. She's an advocate with the Supreme Court, uh, the rest of our panel joining us very shortly. But uh, Ashwarya Bhatti, extremely worrying what has happened here. Uh, you know, we are still awaiting details of what exactly uh, happened to Father Kuria Kos, but uh, one always gets a bad feeling about these things, doesn't it, when key witnesses suddenly drop dead like this? Yes, you're absolutely right, Nidhi. Of course, uh, the event of day, uh, you know, the turn of events further and the investigation will show uh, what really is the issue and how much uh, strength is there. But, uh, I mean, you, you have to connect the dots. Uh, we don't have a, uh, I mean, not to speak about our robust uh, witness protection program, we have uh, abysmally uh, terrible uh, witness protection programs. And in such cases where it is extremely difficult for complainant, uh, to you know to come out and speak and then where there is victimization of victim there's very few people who have actually stood with that nun and uh, obviously the accused person here is a very powerful person the church has thoroughly backed that person and uh, you know it was a continuous um, effort that took even a media campaign so to speak before uh, even the law could take its course so this uh, ought to be investigated we don't know as of now but uh, it has all the right ingredients and all the facts and circumstances for a deeper and a more a stronger probe into this, the whole thing. Sister Jasmine, how, how concerned are you by these turn of events in this case? It comes just days after Bishop Franco walked out on bail and got a hero's welcome in Jalandhar. Uh, it was a bit shocking news this morning when we heard that the body was found of this father Kuriakos. Uh, he is not only one of the hundred witnesses, he is the close associate of the nuns from the very beginning. He trained them. He was with the bishop who organized this congregation. Uh, so he knew every detail of these nuns' behaviors, character, everything. So he's not simply one of the hundred witnesses. And once, <clears throat> once he even uh, uh, disclosed the fact that I know many secret things of this bishop. So he knows every secret. So if this uh, witness is being uh, demolished or uh, uh, wiped away from the earth, maybe we will uh, 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 suspect them as a, the murderer. Or uh, I don't think the things will turn out uh, well because it, uh, all the autopsy, everything is done in Jalanda, where the bishop has strong support. So I am reminded of Sister Abaya's case where they had to f fight for 27 long years and still nothing has come out. So if this is the case, uh, we are scared of even the result of the, of the uh, post-mortem because we, we won't be able to trust it. 100%. Well, that, that's quite so, a strong uh, statement you're making. I mean, uh, and it, uh, you know, that, that you really don't have faith then in the authorities there, given the bishop's influence there. That's what you're saying. That's what I gather from all the news we get from Jalanda because he uh, has so many uh, uh, even legal assistance or uh, uh, police assistance, priest assistance. He's such a strong figure. We, we, we can't even compare him to Hitler, once I compared him to Hitler, I think that is a low comparison because that's what we gather from all the details we get, uh, we read from the reports, we right. talk to people and what we know. 
But as you so, said, as as you said, Sister Jasme, uh, Father Kuriakos, who was found dead today, is not just one of the witnesses in this case who gave a statement against Bishop Franco, the main accused in the rape of the nun. But has but Father Kuriakos himself, as you said, has been a strong supporter uh, of the nuns in the church for a very long time. Um, Dr. Abraham Mathai, who is joining us from Mumbai, he's the former vice chairman also of the State Minority Commission. Dr. Mathai, how, how much does this concern you? This turn of events today. Uh, I mean, it, it is really quite, uh, you know, quite a coincidence uh, that w one of the key witnesses is suddenly found dead. Yes, uh, yeah, Nidhi, in the circumstances in which Father Kuriakos was found dead, it stinks of a conspiracy. So I think the police, and I'm very shocked that the police has also come out with a statement it, that it's a heart attack. If you look at the past conduct of the investigation, if you look at the past conduct of the church administration, and you look even after he was released well, on bail. The police hasn't there was said anything uh, that I'm aware of though. Just, just to correct you there, we don't have any post-mortem details yet. So I don't know, I mean, is this something you read somewhere uh, about a heart attack? Because at the moment they're no, just No, the police made a statement. No, no, I... Okay. Because no, all no, they've said is that I was he vomited. On a different and channel of a couple of minutes okay, ago. Okay. There. No, that I don't know. I am just taking the word of a channel uh, anchor who said that. So if that if that has been said, then I believe then the police in, then the investigation needs to be transferred out on that police. If they have said it's it's a heart attack. So I would see what here. What I'm saying is, you see, look at the conduct in which. The church, in the church compound, he was welcomed with rose petals as if he has come from a Holy Land tour. Absolutely. He had actually come, up, come out of jail and that too accused of rape. So, if you look at this and especially in the light that this priest was threatened, his brother was threatened and, this, and his body is found mysteriously with even blood coming out. You know, he's bleeding. So, there's some problem here. It, it doesn't look natural. I'm not saying... It, it may not be natural, but it looks 90% doesn't look natural. Therefore, the police need to really, set, they have to make an SIT and make it uh, and make the SIT go down to the depth of the truth or the okay. court should intervene and the court should monitor the, this investigation. Okay, so clearly to, nobody to seems to have much Kuriyaku's faith in the local police's because handling of this. It's a question of one witness. Sure. And first it was the Kerala police, frankly, which dragged its feet in this no, case and now... Perhaps I the Punjab police also see, you know, questions being raised over their conduct. We have author Anna Vetikard also joining us on Skype. And Anna, you know, it comes back yes. to the question of just how everything has gone down in this case, from the delay in arresting Bishop Franco. Then, of course, he got bail. And I'm going to ask Ashwarya Bhatti about that in just a moment. He gets bail in such a, in such a case and then gets a hero's welcome. He gets rose petal shard on him just days ago. I mean, there's cl the, the guy clearly has... Uh, a lot of clout and influence within the church. Uh, Nidhi, you know, while of course I don't want to be pronouncing judgment on this particular case, the fact is that if Bishop Franco Molotov's supporters are to claim that he is getting unfair treatment from the media and the public, then he has only himself to blame. Because Franco Molotov has tried to show his muscle power and to intimidate the nuns from day one. Who, who is it who issued that statement on behalf of the missionaries of Jesus maligning the nun who had allegedly been raped? They are uh, the missionaries of Jesus report to Franco Munakal. So, I mean, you know, we can behave like innocent babies or we can face the truth that clearly that statement came because Franco Mulakil influenced them or pressured them to put out the statement. Why did it come? It was an effort clearly to intimidate the nun and to emotionally and psychologically pressure her. And again, who forced him to have this rousing reception for himself when he returned to Jalandhar? I mean, it's not like he's a war hero. Fine, innocent until proven guilty does not mean that you're a hero until proven guilty or that you are a victim until proven guilty. What stopped him from just keeping a low profile once the complaint had been filed with the police and allowing the law to take its own course and not trying to display 
to the public and to the media the extent of his influence. And one more point, Nidhi, because I think this is very important. So far, one has not been 100% sure of what the church's position is because it has been very careful about its official statement. But when the reception took place in, Jandi, uh, in Jalandhar on Franco Molakal's return after he got bail, media reports have clearly stated that the bishop who replaced him in Jalandhar when he stepped down was present at that reception. Why was he present at that reception? Is his presence at the reception not a clear statement of the authorities? support for Franco Mulical. The Catholic Church itself has a lot to answer for. And this, I mean, even if it is just a matter of perception, yes, of course, let the investigation take place. But even if it is a matter of perception, it is Franco Mulical and it is his supporters and it is the Catholic Church that is responsible for the terrible perception that has been built up since the nun filed her police complaint. And, Absolutely. And, and no woman, no woman in the Catholic Church can feel safe now that the church has behaved in this fashion through its silences and its actions.